I got the agenda for you guys prepared where you should have received an email already uh, with the topics what we want to cover. What I added to it is the uh, quick look of the benefits of using an articulator, of course, uh, many of you know that, but um, still I want to I point out a couple of uh, small things there. And we want to have some hands-on where we're actually programming the articulator where we are going through a quadrant case with a mush bytes and comparing what would be static versus dynamic occlusion and seeing how much we could benefit from that. Um, and eventually default settings and I have a promo prepared as well in the handouts we're going to look out. So why should I use a real articulator? meaning a full-size articulator and not just a model holder. Uh, the answer is pretty simple. A real articulator is going to have a complete different size and the relation in between the hinge axis to the center of occlusion is going to be too short on a model holder or, or quadrant um, model. And therefore the movements are going to be very much different and you could expect better results than using an actual articulator. We have some pictures embedded in here, and you can see on, in particular here on the bottom left, the one uh, with the size matching what the average distance in between the condyles are and uh, the relationship, the distance to the center of occlusion. We want to achieve better results, of course, in the lab and chair side, and of course at the bottom line always, we want to save some time and money. So next up, we want to look at the interface between the Altex and the Map 400. And in order to achieve the same quality of the work, of course, it only makes any sense to use as well the virtual articulator to then serve as a bridge in between analog and digital. The uh, transfer kit in particular um, is responsible to transfer everything into the MAP400, into the digital world. <clears throat> this is almost lossless, um, 8 micron of precision if it's calibrated with such a calibration key. Uh, the cases can be transferred with 8 microns of precision between different articulators, Altex articulators, uh, and of course the MAP400. So we see the cases transferred, uh, including a face bow, if you would have a case with a face bow, then into the map 400. Once everything is scanned in on the analog articulator, you could determine the anterior guidance and uh, lateral intrusions, and then transfer everything into the digital world and program the same values what you just had determined into the virtual articulator. Now then where facets can be identified and maintained. And whatever you're doing then should match, of course, your analog work. All right, next up we want to do some hands-on and uh, see some tips, tips and tricks. So what I prepared is I got a database and I purposely loaded up a byte impression case here. And um, the reason is that there's of course a little trick that you can still load up the virtual articulator in uh, a mush byte case with one stone model only selection, uh, selection in the scan mode and as well with two stone, stone models in occlusion that still works. And as well, it works with a intra-wall scan. And the intra-wall scan, it actually comes up as part of the wizard steps, or it should. And um, especially then, and especially if you're trying to go modelless, you should consider running the articulator and take those extra couple of minutes. Uh, you don't have a model to check anything on it. Um, so you have to see if you can check it at all as good as you can uh, in the CAD design. Anyhow, um, let's load or we'll jump into a scene file what I prepared here. Uh, so I made a quick setup 
very small, um, oh, actually this is, should be this one, sorry for that. Um, this would be the case how it would look like if you would have not ran the articulator. You're making a setup and you don't have a selection here at the bottom, it's grayed out for dynamic. And I'm going to show you how to load it up. Uh, I would suggest to run it right away in the very beginning, right when it's asking for the margin detection, but of course you can also run it on a later point. I'm going to go into the export mode by clicking on the hat, and then if I'm going to the tool range, I get a longer list than I just had a second before, and there is the option start articulator. And I purposely now chose a little smaller model because on the last webinar we had the question if that still works also on a quadrant, and I think that was a great question. <clears throat> we have here automatically opens the Bonwell triangle, and we have the articulator draw correction, meaning you could redo an articulation at any given time if you would click on re-articulate models virtually from right here, but in my case it already came up automatically. So it is almost in the correct spot. I want to purposely move it out of the place because I want to show you how to switch here to automatically and then make an automatic um, positioning. It doesn't always work on quadrum cases. It might sometimes be a little tricky, but that's why I want to show it to you. So it is set for set and size the point automatically. So I just have to make a left mouse click and it will jump to set point on left molar. So all I have to do is turn this around, make another point, turn this around again, make another point, perform registration, and now it's pretty much positioned, but it's in the center here, and that's technically not the correct position. So if we want to make it even better, let's switch back to manual, and then what we can do is we can move it over to the side with holding down control, and then clicking it, we can rotate it and put it in the place where we think it's more or less right. <clears throat> if we are happy with the positioning, then we can say here, OK. I want to show you some options here for the Altex CR flat table. We have the average interior guidance table, we have the individual interior guidance table. Uh, it's pretty much up to you what you're choosing. I want to say, in a case like here, where it's uh, cut so small uh, that there's no canine present anymore, no information about interior guidance, nothing. Eventually, you want to think about selecting the average interior guidance table. Um, Maybe take a case and, and uh, see what the differences are in between the different tables. Uh, the individual under your guidance, guidance table might, for cases like that, it'd be a little bit overkill. The uh, nice thing what you can do, though, is let's say you have a canine here on the patient's right. You could uh, tilt the tables individually. Let me load it up. And make a table inclination something what you think is a good average value, and then we could change only one side here of uh, the lateral intrusion and mimic that, and use a flat table on the other side where we have the canine present. Something like that. So uh, that might help, mm, or the opposite way, like this. Right. Um, of course, the average interior guidance table is a little quicker. Uh, it will load by default the flat table. You can change the default settings if you're going to the tool wrench settings. And then here on Articulator, you can make the selection which one you want the software to load by default. I'm going to cancel that for here, though. <clears throat> and I want to point out the movements. Sometimes you got to watch the pin a little bit, see what it does. Uh, especially if you have a very small bite, if it's trimmed down quite a bit like this, it might not make all the movements correctly. If the pin is doing crazy things, um, look into the movements here unfolded and enter some smaller values. Okay, so maybe two, three millimeters, something like that. Five millimeters might be too long. Anyways, I'm going to try it out here with five millimeters and the flat table. I'm going to see what's going to come up. You can kind of watch it. 
Den måtte pin. After they are ran, we see here saving articulator movements, and we can say OK. And now we could repeat them manually, but this is actually not really necessary. What now did not came up is another benefit of uh, the virtual articulator and taking the extra step. Um, we could eventually get a message saying that there was a gap found or an intersection being found. And you normally don't see if there is a gap or an intersection unless you take the extra time going here to the intersections, unfolding it, switching it to proximity, and then including healthy teeth. Then you might be able to see that there is actually eventually a small, small gap in my case. If you're looking at this section here with the three dots, I can see there's it's not quite zero, it's 0 0.03. So in this case, it's not much, but I've seen real world, there's sometimes 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters, and then of course you want to compensate for that. And the articulator actually does that automatically for you or suggest you to uh, get rid of the gap uh, or the intersections. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Now in our case, uh, I can come right back into the wizard and go to adapt and I'm going to show you I now have the option dynamic available. What I want to do is I want to match I like proximity and include healthy teeth. Um, also a reminder if you're trimming your scan data, um, leave as much as you can on there. Just trim all the unnecessary stuff on the bottom and, and whatever, all those artifacts away. Uh, make longer mush bites if you're making new mush bites. Leave the mush bite on the model when you're scanning it. Don't remove it when you have it made fresh. Leave it on there, trim it, scan it, then remove it. All that will help uh, for better results. And the um, the uh, idea of what I'm usually designing after is I'm trying to get the main clearance here and if I'm watching this section here I'm getting an idea I kind of want that yellow color and that usually is about 0.3. So if I'm entering 0.3 and just for fun, cut static so I can show you the difference. Um, I could now go back and add, remove, and pencil some contact points back in where I want them. And anyhow, let's see what the difference looks like in between dynamic. If we're cutting this again, you see it's a massive amount of material which is removed. This all would be bench work. Uh, or maybe even trail side, depending on if that's maybe a modelless situation, uh, et cetera. All right, I hope that saves a bunch of time. The last thing I have uh, is to how to get the dongle tool up, how to get the dongle number to see if you have the license, and how to then send the dongle information over in case you don't have the virtual articulator yet. So if we go into our database, on the right-hand side, we have the dongle tool. Click on it. it. Might take a minute until it comes up. And oh, that was quick. And we can see here what kind of licenses we have. I have it checked. If it's not checked for you, click on the copy serial, say OK, and then paste it into an email and shoot it to your distributor and request the seminal text for the CAT software.